Yo, have you heard about Anchor? It's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast, Buckeye edition. Today we are going to be going over OSU's game that just finished against the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. And we have our captain with us, Byron Mitchell. How are you doing today, sir? Doing good, doing good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Got some, had a little break in between some work stuff and I was like, let's get it in real quick so we could get it out to our beloved fans out there. Yes, sir. So, Byron, man, we we played Tulsa. This is our first game after our loss to Oregon. Uh, We come out on top 41 to 20, but there were still things that we still needed to work on. So, Byron, what did you like about what we did or what you saw? What did you not like? And how are you feeling right now? Now, two, three games into OSU season. So, the first thing. I liked is that we got our running game going. Travion Henderson had a monster game, Mm -hmm. um, 24 carries, 277 yards, and three touchdowns. So I'm glad that we got our running game going against the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Um, That is one thing I didn't like. I mean, I did like, excuse me. And then one thing I didn't like, of course, is the defense um, because on that first drive, Tulsa almost scored a touchdown on their opening drive, but only came away with three points. And that is not something you want to see as an Ohio State fan, just a team going down the field on their opening drive and scoring. Right, right, right. Because Tulsa, at halftime, people were getting a little dicey because it was 13 to 6. Yes. At half. And we were like, 13 to 6 against Tulsa at half. And we were huge favorites in the game. <laughs> so. Yeah, we were like 25 point favorites. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then just to, at halftime, be up only by seven points is insane. Like, ugh, just this defense, man. Yeah, you talk about the defense, and Ohio State had 508 total yards, and you would expect that from our Ohio State offensive team. Right. Also had 501. Insane. Their quarterback had 428 passing yards. Yeah, that's and yeah. two touchdowns. Yep, four. He went 50, he went 31 for 54, 428, two touchdowns, two intercepts, two interceptions. David Davis Bryant, and I don't think in his past games, I'm trying to look at his past games, like he has not even come close to that. Like Oklahoma State, he threw for 224. UCD, who I even need to look up who UCD is. UC Davis Aggies. He only had about two, 201 yards. And then Ohio State, the biggest team he's played this year, probably will the rest of the year, he throws for 428. Insane. Insane. A Big Ten defense gave up 428 yards to a quarterback. From Tulsa. <laughs> From Tulsa. Who only threw like 200 plus in his pre- two previous games yep. against yep. not power five mm-hmm. teams? Mm-hmm. A, po- a non power five team has a better defense than Ohio State. That is insane. <laughs> I never thought I would say those words. <laughs> oh, man. And uh, turnovers. Tulsa had two turnovers. Like we talked about the picks. We had two turnovers. See, they saw through a interception. Um, first downs, Tulsa had 25, we had 24. Time of possession, Tulsa had it for 31 minutes and 34 seconds. OSU 28, 26, so pretty even there. But, yeah, man, it was it was interesting because Kerry Combs was in the booth for this game. Yep, I saw that. 
and we didn't do a lot of man. We did a lot of zone. So it's like if we're doing the zone and a decent quarterback can find those spots within the zone, mm-hmm. I mean, you're going to get a whole bunch of yards in. We didn't pull away from this game until halftime because we scored 14 in the third, 14 in the fourth. They only scored seven in the third, seven in the fourth, and that was the ball game. So, And then C.J. Stroud went 15 for 25, 185, one touchdown, one interception. Uh, Chris Olave did not have a catch this game. Which is strange. He's yeah. our number one wide receiver. He doesn't have a catch. Yeah. yeah, there was one that he dropped. But, yeah, he did not have a catch. And at that point of the game, I was just like, whatever. It's the Travion Henderson show. Just let's get out of there now. Yep. Like, you've got 277, which he broke the freshman rushing record, I believe. So, just get him out of there and let's... And let's go home, in which we did. And then also a big thing about this game, Byron, obviously some people were making about the attendance at the game. Maybe like 71,000. Yeah, about 71 to 76,000, um, which is the lowest in a long time. But like you said, we were 25-point favorites, and it was Tulsa. And not that many people, I mean, are going to want to go to Tulsa, especially if you're still paying, like, those high ticket prices. Right. Like if you lowered the ticket prices for Tulsa, then people would have paid and showed up. But it was also the first week after a loss. Right. And you and, think we would just want to explode and which we didn't. Yeah. We didn't. And um I was just one of those things like OSU fans like, oh man, we just lost, whatever. Some of them like seasons over, which I mean there's still a lot of football to be played, but yeah, I was a little shocked by the number, but again, it's Tulsa. I think there's going to be less numbers next week. Have you seen that we're and we're playing Akron? We're fifty plus point favorite against Akron. Oh yeah, 50 I don't know. Plus. Is it at Ohio State or is it at it's Akron? at Ohio State? And they made that game a night game. Yeah. What, I mean, I guess it's sure make it a night game, whatever. <laughs> but I wouldn't expect a lot there either, especially if we're 50 point favorites. Yeah. Like, why would I just, it's one of those things like, why would you pay over a hundred dollars for not even a great ticket to sit there and watch OSU, who's a 50 point, 50 point favorite against Akron? And the game, if holds true, should be over by the first quarter. So you just drove through all that traffic, parked, paid a hundred plus just for the game to be over in the first quarter, and then you leave. Right. But that's the thing, like scheduling and stuff like that. So, and, and also, like, if, I don't know the last time you've been to an OSU game, but Wi Fi there is not great. So, it's like, not. I, I mean, the seats are still the seats, but it's like bathrooms are still pretty hard to get to. So, it's like, mm-hmm. you got to, I mean, you have all that money. You're doing the improvements, man. You got the money. Improve that Wi Fi. Yeah. And maybe add another bathroom somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, shoot, you got, I mean, this game should be over by halftime. But I, see, will it though, Byron? Will it though? You just never know. Like, this game, the uh, Tulsa game, should have been over by halftime, mm-hmm. or at least the first quarter. It was not. So you just, was this Ohio State team? Like, I, I'm not mad at the offense. That defense, man, you just, you just don't know with the defense. So Akron's quarterback, Irons, he's currently on the year 44 for 58, 534 yards, five touchdowns, one interception. DJ Irons. So, uh, and he's played Auburn, where they lost 60 to 10. Okay. Uh, Temple, where they lost 45 to 24. And then the Bryant Bulldogs, who I have never heard of them, uh, Akron beat. 35 to 14. The highest he's thrown in a game was against Bryant, 296. Does he throw that much more or less against this OSU defense? Uh, I'm going to say more. I'm just, That's wild. Let's go with the over. <laughs> <laughs> so, Byron, also another thing with OSU, man, people are talking about uh, CJ and. Um, 
his 185, one touchdown, one pick. I mean, even after the Oregon thing, which we talked about, which Cedric was on, which is why people are talking about benching him. He's talked about he's had a soldier, a soldier, shoulder injury for a little bit. But he said that after the first game, no one's 100 percent healthy. Three games in, man. What are you feeling about CJ? Because me personally, I'm still feeling a lot of this stuff is premature. I did retweet this press game conference where he was just like, man, I mean, I'm 19 and like, right. I'm learning every day. And what are you thinking about like right now? I am still impressed with CJ Stroud. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he's been doing very well the first two games. I mean, he struggled this game. Every quarterback is going to have a game where they struggle. I think a lot of the hate is very premature. We're only three games in. Um, he has some, he's had some monster games. I mean, he's saw an interception in each game, mm-hmm. which is, it happens. Um, so I'm still a fan of him. I just ex- wanting to see where he goes from here. Um, after, a not a big game after this. So what, what he does against, um, uh, Akron. And I think a lot of, like I said, a lot of his premature and a lot of fans are spoiled from our previous quarterback. Cause we have JT Barrett. Um, I can't think of his name. CJ twelve. Oh, Cardell Jones. Yes, Cardell Jones. <laughs> um, Justin Cardell. Fields. Mm-hmm. So we've had some du- great Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins. So like the last four quarterbacks that we've had have been very impressive. So I think most Ohio State fans are spoiled and want to see that type of production from CJ Stroud. But he's a true freshman. He's only nineteen. He has. A lot of room to grow. So a lot of fans are unnecessarily hard on him. I also think too with the OSU fan base, it's like off the top of your head, Byron, when's the last time we had a true freshman starting? I can't even remember. Exactly. I think people are forgetting that. Dustin Fields wasn't a true freshman. No. He came he was, literally, he was that couple years at Georgia. Mm-hmm. Dwayne Haskins was not a true freshman. He's been. He was in the. He was in the bench. Like he started his junior year, where he could have came back for a senior year. Mm-hmm. Like JT Barrett was there all four years. Cardell was there for his three whatever years. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I Braxton was there for his couple of years. Like, I'm trying to even remember the last true freshman to start. It might have been even Terrell Pryor did not start immediately. I mean, he ended up starting later at the end of the year, but even he didn't start immediately. Right. I, th- I want to say it's Justin's wick, but I could be wrong about that. Like it's, it's been a while since like you walk into campus and you're the starter at OSU football. Yeah. Because usually there's someone who's behind you or like who's ahead of you. Like we have a junior or senior and then this next man up. This time is the only time like ever we've had all these people coming at the same age, really. Like if you really look back, it's been a long time since we've just had a fresh face person and i know there's like red shirt whatever but he's 19 years old it's it's been a while right he's up i don't let him get through this first year and then make your criticism i would also say too so i know it's been the first time in a while someone this young and fresh face has started like in this new age of like social media yeah that's very true with like snapchat twitter i mean instagram every random Joe Schmo having a take on you. Like I saw something it's like, Oh, I hate to say this, but after three games, OSU needs to bench CJ Stroud. I'm like, what? Why? What has he done wrong? He's only, I think he's thrown three, maybe four interceptions. In three, three picks. Games. He's, th- three he's picks. through one, one. It's one a game so far. Right. And he's I mean, at two multi touchdown games. Like mm-hmm. this is the first game where he's only had one touchdown. And it's only the third game. Like, but he didn't have to throw because Henderson was running all over the place. Right. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm more, I'm more into the defense. Like that's where my focus is. Same. Because people are like points, points, points. I'm like, it's cool if you could score points, but if you can't stop anybody. What's the point? <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure. It's cool. Like if you're playing lesser competition, but once you, once we get back to the big 10 schedule, I mean, it's going to be something else. And Byron, I know we did the preview on OSU's schedule in our first Buckeye podcast, and yep. now this 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 schedule is pretty tough, man. Like, I don't know if people have been seeing what's been going on in 
the Big Ten, especially the Big Ten East, it's mm-hmm. it's pretty dangerous. Like we're up there now with potentially being one of the best divisions in college football right now. Yeah, because we have Penn State who just beat Auburn. Big win for the Big Ten because we failed last week. And they, that was a big – if we would have had two big nationally televised games in a row of us, I mean our best team in the Big Ten, us losing to Oregon, and then if Auburn, who I don't even know – what they're so ranked and they're so good, but mm-hmm. them – they weren't in the top three in the S uh, EC walking into our second best big 10 team, our best big 10 environment. I mean, cause ABC white out at night, Penn state is different. It's a dangerous game for any team to play. <laughs> we have been there. We have lost games there. We have eked out games there. It is mm-hmm. when it's ABC at night, Penn state white out. It is dangerous. They're, they just elevate so much. Their fans are so into it at a, in a whiteout night game. And they I, I just want to go to that stadium just for one whiteout game. Just to say I've been. <laughs> that's, a, that's a spot, man. That is a spot. But then um, also with Penn State, did you see how that ref effed up? Yeah, I didn't see it because I was uh, still at the wedding reception. Mm-hmm. But I heard about it, and that is abysmal officiating job. That- they should that person should be fired. Yeah. Uh, that that they, they gotta all go. But just think about it. Rutgers, who Greg Shiano's there, shout out to Greg. They're not the same Rutgers right now. They're doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. Rutgers is three and oh right now. So Rutgers, Maryland, who has baby a baby two is still there. Yep. They're th- they're three and oh. Indiana. Indiana is one and two, but their two losses have been the top 10 teams. Iowa and then Cincinnati just last sat this past Saturday, who they were ahead for a half, and then Cincinnati just came through. So they're still good. They still have Penix, so and we know how that goes. We're talking about our past defense. <laughs> <sighs> they I mean, still have Fry Fogel. Yep, nope, they still got them. Penn State, who's in the Big Ten East, they're three and oh, just had the biggest win for the Big Ten. And they're number six in the country. And then another Big Ten East team who me and you said, if they become anything close like their old selves at this past decade, could be trouble. Michigan State. They're running who's also, game. Who's 3-0. They just beat a top 25 team in Miami, Florida. Yep. To be honest, I felt like they beat the brakes off of Miami worse than what Alabama did. And that's saying something. That's saying a lot, especially since it's an unranked Michigan State team. Mm -hmm. And now they're ranked in, yeah, I mean, Mr. Walker III has 57 carries, 493 yards, and five touchdowns already in three games. Insane. I am not looking forward to facing them (laughs) later this year. And then, of course, the other team in the Big Ten East is Michigan. I think they're 3-0, too. They're three. No, they started the year. Michigan and Michigan State started the year unranked. And now Michigan, they're 19 in the country. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't rank Michigan State after being Miami. Oh, they are. They're 20th. Oh, Michigan State is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So we do. Yeah, we have a lot of ranked teams in the Big we'll Ten. Go, we'll go to our rankings as we do for you guys after we're talking about the Big Ten East. And yeah, man, I mean, Michigan. Sure, it was Northern Illinois, but... I mean, they just put up, what, 63 to 10? 63 to 10. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I know their running back is very good. I can't think of his name right now, but... I think Michigan has changed, though, ever since they... Well, they hired Mike Hart this year. Mike Hart. And, and all those Buckeye back. fans, we know, we know who Mike Hart is. Yeah. So I think he's fine. He's instilling that stuff into Michigan because now... Ever since he got there, now they had the beat Ohio drill. I mean, they had the beat Ohio drill. You heard Harbaugh saying, uh, we're going to beat our rivals. Or we're going to die trying. I mean, I'm, I'm still a long ways to go. They got some big games coming up. Uh, Michigan has Rutgers, which Rutgers is three. And that's an ABC game. That's going to be a big game. Mm-hmm. Then they have Wisconsin after that. That's and then always they, a big game. Then Saturday – Saturday, October 30th, Byron, 
is going to be a really big day for the Big Ten as a whole. You got, got you have OSU versus Penn State, Oof. and you have Michigan versus Michigan State. Ooh, 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 that, ooh. that's going to be a big, like Michigan State, and then they have Indiana. Like from October thirtieth to the rest of the season, Michigan has Michigan State, Indiana, Penn State, Maryland, Ohio State. I didn't even realize we're going to Michigan this year. Yep. That's, that's they cool. were supposed to come to us last year, but they yeah, canceled it. That's, that's problematic. So, yeah. Yeah, man. We like the Big Ten East right now is, is pretty crazy. So then when you go on the national thing, we did actually drop a spot in the AP. We went to 10th. In the coaches' poll, we went to 12th. Um, just look at the Big Ten teams and the rankings. Iowa is number five in the country. Penn State is six. We're 10th. Then you go down. Wisconsin's 18th. Michigan's 19th. Michigan State is 20th. So that's six ranked big team teams? Yeah. Good. Two in the top six, three in the top 10. And then you look at the rest. Alabama's still number one. Georgia's two. Oregon, three. Oklahoma, four. Iowa five, Penn State six, Texas and eight seven, Cincinnati eight, Clemson nine, OSU ten in the AP top twenty-five. Byron on the national scene, I'm gonna be honest, man. Um, Florida showed some heart because they they could have beat Alabama. They could have. Like that showed that this isn't the same jugger, like they're mortal Alabama. I know they're still the favorites, but things can be done against Bama. You yeah, this is might be somebody's year to finally beat Bama and keep them out of the playoffs. But another, it's been two out of the three games, man. I, I'm, I don't know why, or I don't know why Oklahoma's in the top four. I don't know why they started the year number two so far. I really don't. If you watch and Nebraska is one of the worst teams in the big 10 and Nebraska had a game with them. If it wasn't for the pick of the year, Nebraska maybe could have pulled it out. Yeah. Nebraska really show their own, which is great to see a big team team. I think well, they were I almost a a 30. 12. I think they were almost a 30 to 20 point underdog that game. I believe so. What was the final score? Uh, I know it was low. I don't even think anyone reached the 30s. Let me get that for you. Oklahoma won 23 to 16. Wow. So about a touchdown, basically. Yeah. That. I so mean, Nebraska. Yeah. Oklahoma should have trounced Nebraska. No offense to Nebraska. Oh, yeah. They should have. They should have. Nebraska show hard. They're like, hey, we're not going home. We're going to show what the Big Ten can do against a, another Power Five conference. So, respect to Nebraska. But I, if you struggle against Nebraska, I, I don't know if you should be ranked that high. Because they almost lost their first game to um, Tulsa. Tulsa, no, yeah. No, it was Tulsa. Tulane, Tulane, Tulane. They had the T teams mixed up. Yeah, that was a five point game. Mm hmm. So, Byron, you know how we end our podcast as we talk about the national scene and all of that. Uh, What are we we feeling right now? Because there's some big – October 2nd, we've already previewed Cincinnati plays Northern Dame. If Northern Dame stays undefeated – because Northern Dame actually plays Wisconsin this Saturday, if I'm correct. Yeah, they're they're playing Wisconsin, which is a number 18 team in the country. Mm Mm-hmm. So if they beat Wisconsin, that's and Notre Dame, you want to talk about survive in advance. They are playing survive in advance. They have not had a decisive win all year. Nope. So far. Florida State almost beat them. I forgot who they played their second game. Toledo. Toledo, yep. Toledo they almost beat them. 32-29. <laughs> Purdue was in there for a while. 27-13. They got Wisconsin coming up. And then they got the big one with Cincinnati. And Cincinnati needs Notre Dame obviously be ranked as high as possible. Mm-hmm. Because if, if Cincinnati beats Notre Dame, man, because seeing the teams in front of them, some of these teams, they're guaranteed there's going to be losses on the teams in front of them throughout the season. Like Texas and AM, too, I don't think they should be in the top 10. I'm sorry. They, they haven't been impressive to me. I know they had the 34 0 win. But against Colorado, they won 10 to 7. They almost lost that game, too. I know. I, I honestly feel like it's more from a marketing thing. They're trying to get to the 10 9 game versus Alabama. 
Yep. But I, I don't see it. Georgia right now, I can't say that Georgia deserves to be in the top three. That defense is crazy. Honestly, also, but I can make a case that Oregon, Oregon and Iowa have more impressive wins. Because I don't think Clemson's it this year, man. Because they're not showing it. They have they're, no offense. They're not showing it at all, which is very surprising to see because everyone had them. I think they were the top in the top four. Oh, yeah. At the, the beginning. beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. Now they're nine. We're ten. It, it's that's well, been Georgia, a very interesting college football year. <laughs> Georgia Tech, they only beat them 14 to eight. That's true. Like Obviously, they don't. They're not going to be playing anyone else for the rest of the year. But they only beat George Tech fourteen to eight. I don't. I honestly, right now, wish we had like a college football playoff sound. But you know, we're a mom and pop podcast. <laughs> right now, the, the ACC ain't getting in, so that spot's gone. I'm the sorry, ACC is not getting in as of right saying. now. They're out. North Carolina, it ain't happening. Yeah, they need a ton of chaos for the rest of the season for them to get in, which I don't see that it happening for them. No, I need, like, I'm feeling right now, currently, it's going to be the SEC champ, a Mm one-loss SEC team, if they're both undefeated. Uh, Right now, the Big Ten champ, and then the, uh, I was about to say, well, shoot. Pac-12 might be in there, Oregon. I think if Oregon stays undefeated, yeah, but if Oregon stays undefeated and Oklahoma stays undefeated, you, mm. I feel like Oregon right now has the best win against us. Yeah. Oklahoma. So that's the thing. One of those conferences might be out too. That is insane. So ACC, they're going to be out. Then it'll be between the Big 12 and the Pac-12 because I think the Big 10 will get someone in, even if it's not us, just looking. Because if it's not us, that means Penn State beat us and went to the Big 10 championship game. Yep. Or... Iowa beat us in the Big Ten championship game. Yeah. So I think the Big Ten is in a good spot to get in right now because Iowa, ooh, oh, man, I don't – it will be C because I – because uh, 10-9, October 9th, Iowa go – is Iowa plays Penn State. At Penn State? Oh, Byron's getting nervous. No, it's in Iowa. <laughs> oh, Kinnick Stadium? Yeah. Oh, that way. oh, that's a hostile environment, too. Fire, we might have to preview that just for the – because that's going to affect us a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're either going to play an undefeated Penn – if Penn State beats Iowa, Penn State will be in the top three. If Iowa beats Penn State, they will be in the top three. Who do you push out of the top three? Because right right now that game is five versus six. If they play today, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to be locked in for that game. But that is <laughs> that is ten nine uh, time to be determined. Uh, I feel like that's gonna because that I feel like that has might, to be a night game. Uh, or, or do you do night game for Iowa? Or do you get the three thirty ABC slot so you can do that wave for the hospital thing? We know about that. That's true. Because they I like, feel the like they still ones. do the wave at the nighttime. That's true. That's true. That's a if game day would have to be there. But what else? Oh, for sure. But what else is going? Wait, is that also Alabama? And, is that also Alabama and Texas A and M ten nine? Let me hold me Ooh, to that. If it is, yes, it is. Ooh. That's ten nine. Oh, that's a big week coming in two weeks. In a couple weeks. Oh my god! I actually don't know where game day would go. I think it would have to go. I don't it, know. Personally, I think it should go to Iowa and Penn State. I do because they're closer in rankings. Yeah. That game's good. Oh, my God. I don't think Buckeye fans are realizing in two weeks. Like, I know we talked about it. Would you rather want an undefeated Penn State or you rather want an undefeated Iowa? Like, this is huge. Oh, man. Because we played Penn State first. Yes. And we have to get to Penn. We have to. Get to Iowa because <laughs> we're That's assuming they're going to win the Big Ten West. Assuming, I think I would rather play an undefeated Penn State first. So that means Iowa. They have to beat Iowa. Yeah. See. <laughs> I mean, either way. Well, assuming this is assuming we make it to the Big Ten championship. 
I think either if we, you know, face Penn State and win or face mm-hmm. Iowa and win or either one's undefeated, that makes us look good. But I don't know who's more dangerous right now. I think it would have to be Penn State because they just came up with a big win. defense is low-key. It's elite. They don't play. Right, because they just had a defensive battle against Wisconsin the first game, right? Yeah, we saw that defense. We're like... Yeah, old-school Big Ten defense. But my problem is, Byron, with I, with playing Penn State on the 30th, like, but the week before, we're at Indiana, and that's, that's a trap game, man, because we can't play defense right now. We, we cannot play defense. And to be honest, now I'm looking at this Big Ten thing, like, Maryland has baby Tua. They can sling it. Like, any team now who could sling it, I'm concerned. First, we were concerned about the running game. Now we're concerned about the passing game. <laughs> uh, what's next, special teams? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think we'll get to, well, you, well, at least we're being at least we're being smart about it. You have the other people like, oh, we're concerned about the running passing. We're concerned about – I have no concerns about the offense. Absolutely zero. No. But – I'm, it's wild, man, and now just thinking about the stuff and now re-looking at the schedule because we were like, eh, max, we have one loss. Now we're at the max, but we forgot to – we forgot our ever-dangerous rivals, Purdue. Are we play Purdue this year? <laughs> oh, no. We play them before Michigan State. <laughs> oh, no. So our last five games are Indiana, Penn State, Purdue. No, no. Our last five would be in uh, Penn State, Nebraska. Oh, that's the last. Yeah. Penn State, Nebraska, Purdue, Michigan State, Michigan. The last six would be at Indiana. Ooh, that is a tough last six game. We didn't think so at the beginning because we didn't know what the Big Ten East was going to provide. Now they're out here doing it. Man. If Michigan beats... If Michigan beats Wisconsin, uh, Rutgers and Wisconsin back to back, yeah, I mean, is Michigan also ha- Michigan has to go to Happy Valley, and they got to go to Michigan State. This is tough road games. These this Big Ten East. We went from it's crazy how what happens when you actually play games and not just look at preseason rankings. Mm-hmm. We went from. Ah, this is going to be another smooth, easy Big Ten championship for OSU. Now, legitimately, with the, I do not know. Right now, I don't think we'd win the Big Ten. I really don't. The way our defense is playing, I don't see that either. Because I know Michigan State and Michigan has two very good running backs. Mm-hmm. And I am not. No, Iowa team. plays defense. Penn State plays defense. Ooh, yeah. I'm glad we're not going to Penn State. Oh, for sure. Because that would have been Penn State basically at Penn State at night on Halloween. Oh, hell no. Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> I am glad that we got to, OSU has to make that a night game. They got to. They can't make this at 12 o'clock nonsense. They got to have They got to have a night game. They got to have mm-hmm. a blackout. Mm-hmm. It needs to be the ABC game, 730, which I do like that they've been doing 730 instead of 8 because the games end a little bit earlier for people. But they got to make that a night. That's that is a day before Halloween. So you already know you can get those students in there going crazy. Like that has to be a night game. Yes. Anything, mm-mm. anything will, will not will not cut it. It has to be at night. Kevin Warren, if you listen to this, is that that has to be a night game? Byron, what do you what do you watch on ten nine? Alabama, Texas A and M, or Iowa, Penn State? Both. <laughs> you gotta watch both. But for the people, multi screens. <laughs> oh man, like this is gonna be this is gonna be wild. Also, it's too early right now, but we haven't brought it up. But we are in week three. I have no Heisman favorites right now, man. I haven't watched enough games. I don't think Spencer I, Rattler should not be the high. Remember, he came, remember Oklahoma came in preseason number two. Rattler was going to win the Heisman. They were going to win the title. That ain't it. That, I don't no. think they win the title. Shit. They might not make the playoffs if the Pac-12 goes undefeated. If Oregon goes undefeated. They're in. Oklahoma is not getting in. 
which would be crazy. Right. Go from number two to not making the playoffs. <laughs> Even if you go undefeated. I because their schedule is two. So it's like and they're number four right now. And Iowa and Penn State have so many big games. Like they're going to West Virginia. That's the night game. West Virginia this Saturday. Versus Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. Then mm. Kansas State is 25. I don't even know. Well, I guess I have to give it um, because it's respect because it's a rivalry. 10 9, Byron. We might just have to do a special on 10 9. It's that, Texas uh, versus Oklahoma. Oh, Red that, Why is that such a big day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 10 9 is looking very dangerous for the country in college football. Man, what what number is Texas now? They're not ranked, but you're not know how rivalry good. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Because I remember that Oklahoma Texas game last year. That was really good. Mm-hmm. Their biggest opponent left is first number 14, Iowa State, who's only lost to Iowa. So. Iowa State's a good, another good team that always Iowa seems State. to spoil Oklahoma season. Mm-hmm. So, 10 9, everyone, for college football. You got a couple of weeks of buckle up. Me and Byron might just have – we know we'd preview the Buckeye games, but probably after the 10-second pod during that one, we're going to have to preview all the 10-9 games, the big ones for us. So, Because they will affect the college football playoff. Which will affect us. Which will affect us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Penn State, Iowa directly affects us. Yes. I admit, I'm Alabama – Texas A&M directly affects us. And you're asking why? If Texas A&M loses, they'll be below us because we're assuming we're going to win all our games, hopefully. If Alabama hopefully. loses, that's a problem because they will be ranked above us. They will be a one-loss team. And if we win the Big Ten, they'll be like, oh, do we want a Big Ten champ? Or will one-loss Big Ten champ or a one-loss Alabama? We, again, we've talked about this two weeks ago. The committee has already made that decision. They've showed it to us. You already know what happened, and then two of them won the championship. So, yep. I think it was what last podcast, the podcast before that, we said Ohio State needs to control their own destiny. It is oh, out of our hands now. Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> I mean, sure, we have to beat Penn State, all of them, but there's some other games here. Like, I, but, uh, man, it's like I don't know. Like, what if Penn State only loses? To Iowa. Ohio State. Ohio, yeah, Ohio State. And then Ohio State goes, or like Iowa loses. It's like, so what if something crazy happens that Iowa, Penn State, and Ohio State all end with just one loss? And what if Michigan really, cr- but what if Michigan really crashes this party? Uh, Michigan can. If they beat Penn State and Ohio State in the same. I, it's way too early, but if they beat Penn State and Ohio State, they're going to potentially get in. Because they would have been in, hmm. they'd be in the top 10 by then. They'd be in the Big Ten Championship. Yeah. And they're flying under the a, radar. A game, Iowa. Mm-hmm. And they're flying under the radar, man. 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 When does... I won and Wisconsin play. Do they play this year? Because that would be determine who comes out the who West. Comes out of the Big Ten West. Yep. Let's yeah. pull it up. Let's see if they got trap games in between too. <laughs> Don't tell me that's t- <laughs> no, it can't be 10-9 because they right. play Penn State on 10-9. Right, right, right. They go at Wisconsin on 10-30 when we're playing Penn State. <laughs> All right, that's another must-see game. Dang, game day. Okay. 12 o'clock. That's 12 o'clock <laughs> at Wisconsin. We talk about Big Ten environments. You know, jump around is going to be mm-hmm. at max power. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but in between Penn State and Wisconsin, they got that ever sneaky Purdue who's out there to ruin somebody's season. Yep. And then 11 13. If he wasn't hurt, man, uh, they play Minnesota. And Minnesota's pretty good. They've only lost once to us. Yeah. Uh, they got Mah- if, Ibra- if Muhammad Ibrahim did not get hurt. That would be a very different Ohio State game. We probably actually probably would have lost. I'm confident in saying that now. So, Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Byron, man, anything else before we sign off? This has been a great, great pod talking with some college football. We're already seeing that in a couple of weeks. We, we, we got some business to discuss on 10-9. 
circle your calendars. And it's going to be a great game day. <laughs> oh, man. With that being said, thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. You guys take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.